the first unit was tether tested just 30 weeks after start of the development program. The unit next was flight tested with only safety lines attached. This rugged airborne unit can take off and land vertically, hover, and be translated in any direction in a stable, controllable manner. Instantaneous control is possible, indicating adaptation for pop-up over-the-hill surveillance. The demonstration unit weighs 235 pounds. A ground operator controls position and motion of the airborne unit with a simple set of controls. The engine in the demonstration shroud develops approximately a 6 to 1 lift to horsepower ratio at sea level. Engine power is fed to the propellers through a gearbox transmission system in which engine RPM is reduced to a usable level and counter-rotation is achieved. Counter-rotating propellers eliminate rotational torque and gyroscopic effects. Vanes in the shroud exit area achieve pitch, roll, and yaw control. Initial tests show feasibility of launching from heavy brush. Unlike most reconnaissance systems, LALO is recovered without use of a parachute, eliminating ground impact damage. A quick release launch and a mechanical pull down recovery technique under full power allow complete remote operation of LALO by a two man carrier vehicle crew. The ducted fan enclosure enables the unit to be handled without hazard to operating personnel. Four man assist landings have been used but mechanical pull-down recovery by one man is feasible. Successful pre-flight tests with good ground-based control were made in June 1962. During the first pre-flight test, balloons were spotted at various locations on 100-foot lines for reference. The pilot for the pre-flight had only 30 minutes training on a tether rig, which gave an early indication of the ease with which future operators can be trained. Each flight lasted for 9 minutes on 30% of fuel. A proposed unit versus the demonstration unit will consider refinements such as power plant with greater horsepower, optimized airframe and control for greater speed, range, and endurance, additional fuel capacity for flight extension to two hours, all-weather capability, optimized subsystems for weight reduction, improved TV for better resolution, and narrow beam communication. With LALO, the battalion commander will be able to see events as the situation is developing without endangering patrol personnel. With videotape recordings of intelligence from LALO sensors, commanders of higher echelons will be able to view and compare actions in their various sectors of operation. A quick release mechanism was tried for the second pre-flight and proved successful. This can permit two men to launch and operate the vehicle from an unexposed position under high wind conditions. Performance, stability, and control response were demonstrated to be satisfactory. Balloons were on 200-foot lines for reference during this test. Real-time location and identification capability of LALO can supply intelligence for countering guerrilla action. The unit will present a small radar cross-section, and during hover or at slow translation speed, Doppler information is denied to the enemy. Because of the unit's small size, visual detection is difficult. Preliminary studies have shown future possibilities of multiple modes of operation for the system, such as chemical and radiological detection, 
communication repeater, RF monitor, critical item delivery system, bomb carrier, anti-tank weapon, and use with future sensor systems. Pre-flight tests have conclusively demonstrated feasibility of the General Dynamics unit. Sufficient data have been gathered to indicate that extended flight at higher altitude with smoother, faster translation is practicable. The results of this program have set the stage for advances in reconnaissance capability. Security surveillance and close battlefield reconnaissance supplied by this system can provide timely and factual combat intelligence to support tactical operations. Accomplishments to date prove design feasibility of a real-time all-weather reconnaissance system organic to the attack group. The way is paved for the tactical version of LELO. The tactical unit can be operational within two years.